we are going to be giving meds now. I have already assessed my patient. I have taken vital signs. I have assessed the need for any PRN medications that they might want. And I am coming to the med room. I'm going to wash my hands. And then look at my MAR, making sure that I have the correct patient, their name and their date of birth are on there and are correct. I'm looking at their allergies to ensure that I'm not giving anything that they might be allergic to. I am looking at the time and determining which of these medications I need to give. Then I will pull the medications from our automated dispenser. Once I have what I need for each medication individually, I'm going to compare it against my MAR. So I'm looking at the name of the medication on the MAR and the med. I'm looking at the dose. I'm checking the expiration date to make sure they are not expired. And I am making sure that the uh, root is correct. Once I have pulled all of my medications, I will grab any supplies that I need. I have already done my first check of my IV fluids at uh, the automated dispensing system. I'm now going to a quiet place to do my second check. So I have my IV fluids, I have my tubing, primary tubing, a flush, alcohol swab, a label for my tubing and tape. I'm going to do my second check against my MAR verifying that I have the correct patient and checking their name and their date of birth and checking their allergies. I'm going to compare my MAR against my medication, ensuring that I have the right one. I'm going to say the name. I have 0.9% so sodium chloride here, 0.9% sodium chloride. I'm checking the expiration date. I'm looking at the fluid to make sure that it is clear. It is not discolored. There's nothing in it and the bag is intact. I've done my calculations and I know that I have a 20 drip per minute drip rate. So that will give me five drips in 15 seconds. I am now going to take all this to my patient's room. I have knocked on my patient's door and entered, introduced myself, explained to my patient what we are going to do. I've also raised the bed and dropped to the side rail so I have better access to him. We're going to uh, verify his name and date of birth, bringing my MAR to the bedside. Can you tell me your name and date of birth? And do you have any allergies? Okay. Now we'll do our third check of the medication. I'm going to state the name of the medication on the MAR, state the name on the bag, uh, we are going to double check the root is IV. These bags don't typically have a dose unless you have something like an additive of uh, potassium chloride. If you do, then make sure you're checking that. Uh, checking the time and that we have the correct frequency, which may be continuous for our primary IV. We are going to wash our hands. and get this bag ready to spike. I've already checked my expiration date and ensured that my fluids are clear. I'll pull out my tubing, try to straighten it out. This is... We're gonna move this roller clamp as far up as you can and clamp it. Inverting your bag, take off this cap and remove this cap, ensuring that you maintain sterility of both the spike and the bag. Going straight in, twist back and forth until that is all the way in the bag. Now I will hang it and squeeze the drip chamber should be about half full. I 
and slowly release your clamp. Make sure these ports are upside down as the fluid comes through them. That will help to keep any air bubbles out of your tubing. So we are slowly filling that up. As it gets toward the end, clamp it a little bit, making sure you have fluid all the way through. And then clamp that all the way shut. You're going to check the tubing to see if there are any air bubbles left over. Little ones are fine. If you've gone slow enough, you shouldn't have any. Okay, making sure this is closed so that we keep the sterility of that top. I'm going to drape this over. Now I'm going to label my tubing. Check your hospital policy to determine how long your tubing is good for. These labels will tell you when to change the tubing. So this one says change Thursday. Now check your hospital policy to determine if you need to don gloves at this point. Uh, we are going to assess our patient's IV site, uh, checking to make sure that it's intact, that it's not leaking. I'm going to feel their arm to see if there's any reddened areas, warmth, uh, ask the patient if it hurts at all. Next, we will get our flush ready. Sometimes you need to pull these down to pop the air seal. Take off this top and leave it with the open part up on the table. And make sure you have all of the air out. And you can recap it or you can just hold on to it. Using an alcohol swab, we are going to clean this port for at least 15 seconds. I like to open the alcohol swab and drape it around so you're getting all sides. Make sure you're cleaning vigorously. Keeping this in your hand so it's not dropping onto your patient going to remove the cap, keeping the tips sterile. Slowly inject the flush and assess your patient, making sure they're not in any pain. Should do at least three to five milliliters. We can leave that right there or we can take it off, making sure that it is in our hand the entire time so that it stays sterile and grab our IV tubing. Go ahead and take this cap off, maintaining the sterility of this tip and remove our flush very carefully. Twist that on, making sure you're not touching either of those tips. At this point, we want the patient to be in the position that they will remain while our fluids are going. So I'm going to drop the bed all the way down. And I can put my side rail back up. Holding the tubing at a loose position so that you're not holding it up here because they will change the rate once you drop it. You want to slowly release that roller clamp up until you see drips going. And then time for 15 seconds to get those five drops within the 15 seconds. Okay. 
you'll have to go up and down to speed up or slow down your drips until you can get it right on that number. Okay, we have five and 15 seconds. We are going to double check our patient's IV site, making sure that they are not in pain and the IV is flowing well. And tape up the tubing to our patient's upper arm. And then wash our hands and document.